When someone's diagnosed with cancer, one of the first things they do is, doctor, how can I change my diet? Can I go on a vegan diet? What if I, um, what if I have more antioxidants and, or uh, ketogenic diets, fasting diets, fasting mimicking diets? If we knew that there was a diet that was curing cancer, everyone would be getting that diet. So a diet alone is not the answer. We know that metabolism is absolutely critical for regulating immune fate and immune function. One could potentially envision trying to develop therapies that interrupt this interaction between tumor cells and the surrounding cells, specifically focusing on metabolism. There's been an explosion. If you look at the literature in the past five to six years, a lot of cancer metabolism papers are in the forefront because of the novel discoveries based on metabolic changes in those cells. So imagine you were at a party, and how would you define cool. metabolism research in cancer specifically to a non-scientist that you met in this the This is how I start season? all my parties. Yes. <laughs> metabolism is the process by which any cell in the body consumes food to produce energy. All a cancer cell cares about is to grow and survive. It utilizes metabolic pathways very differently than a normal cell because a normal cell has all of the other functions in addition to growing. But also as scientists recognize that we can create situations where our medicines may work better. You can treat food as medicine, and if you understand the biology of the cancer cell, the biology of the tumor, then you can use that information to design a diet that exploits those vulnerabilities. If you acquire too much of anything, it can be a vulnerability. The one nutrient that these tumors need an abundant amount of is iron and they need it for maintaining their metabolism and to maintain their growth. Sometimes putting people on low iron diet is not very easy. So that's one example of a nutrient, but you can make that case for many different nutrients. Cancer cells utilize a ton of glucose. Let's talk about sugar as glucose, right? So in the instance of a tumor that's dependent on glucose, you can give the patient a diet that doesn't have glucose and that opens up a vulnerability that otherwise is not present because they can use compensatory metabolic pathways. We know that immunotherapy is a very promising lead so far, and we know that immunotherapy can actually depend on metabolism. So when the body immune system goes to fight and kill tumor cells, the metabolism actively changes in these immune cells. So this can be a way to harness the immune system by looking at metabolism and that it's not the tumor cell by itself. It's actually the context of the surrounding cells and all the other things. Metabolism research, I think it's just the beginning. There's so much more to do. Cancer cells are much smarter than us, so they develop other things to overcome what we do to treat them. You block one pathway, they find another way around. What our studies will continue to do is identify not only those initial pathways, but our adaptive pathways that go on. A lot of our dietary changes seem to be working in synergy with standard chemotherapeutics as well. And so I think that is very promising, at least in our mouse models. Understanding how the immune system recognizes and kills cancer is going to be the way that we ultimately deal with cancer, period. And so if we can understand how immune cells use metabolites, then we can better train those immune cells to recognize and kill cancer.